welcome to Treasury Notes, a show dedicated to the latest news and information from the Office of West Virginia State Treasurer, John Perdue. I'm your host, Gina Long. The State Treasurer's Office is a leader in successfully returning unclaimed property to rightful owners. In fact, last year, Treasurer Purdue's office led all other state treasuries in the nation by returning 82% of what our state's unclaimed property program took in for the year. A little later on today's program, we're going to take a closer look at the success of our unclaimed property system and how new technology is making it easier than ever to submit a claim. It's called eClaims, and we'll find out how it works a little later. But first, we want to update you on some of the other news making headlines from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. State Treasurer John Perdue has become a national leader in financial education and has been recognized with several awards. One of his greatest successes for education is the development of the Smart 529 College Savings Program. It's grown to $1.2 billion in assets, and the Smart 529 West Virginia Direct was just ranked number two in the nation for its one-year investment performance by a website called savingforcollege.com. A recent essay contest to promote the Smart 529 program helped both students and their schools cash in on college savings. State Treasurer Purdue says it's just one example of his commitment to financial education. Kindergarten student Joseph Obachowski says when he grows up, he wants to be an engineer. And now he's $500 closer to that goal thanks to the When I Grow Up essay contest. Obachowski is one of 15 winners of the contest sponsored by State Treasurer John Perdue and the Hartford. Obachowski won $500 toward a Smart 529 college savings account for his essay. He also won money for his school, JN Elementary. I'm a big promoter of financial literacy because I believe it will change young people's lives because when I first became state treasurer and started traveling the state, I started running into children that couldn't even balance a checkbook graduating from high school. In February, State Treasurer Purdue traveled to Marion County. He presented Obachowski's school with a $500 check. Children. During his like, trip, he also like spoke to local businessmen and women at First Exchange Bank's annual Groundhog Day event. He took the opportunity to stress the importance of education. If West Virginia is going to prosper, we, if we're going to change West Virginia, we have to realize education is our cornerstone. Treasurer Purdue wrapped up his trip by emphasizing that all West Virginians must work together. I believe West Virginia can be on the forefront of our national economy recovery, but we must be willing to invest in our children's education. That investment is not just in financially, in 529 plans, it's in your time, our time, it's in your commitment, our commitment to the future of this great state. While financial education is a big part of the treasurer's office, the primary function of the treasurer is as the banker of the state. The Board of Treasury Investments manages the state's operating funds and the BTI also offers state agencies and local governments the option of investing in the West Virginia short-term bond pool. The Board of Treasury Investments is getting out the message public finance officials have the option of investing with the West Virginia short-term bond pool. The BTI recently hosted a seminar to discuss the options. It also gave officials the opportunity to ask questions. For many local governments looking to grow their budgets, it's a step in the right direction. We're pleased to manage this pool and we believe it's a great solution for local governments here in West Virginia. When used in combination with money market options, these investors can create their own solutions to target the yields and liquidity constraints they have. Investors say the short-term bond pool often offers the potential for greater total return compared to the typical money market fund. For more information on investing with the BTI, log on to our website at www.wvbti.com. Right now we're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll unlock the mystery of unclaimed property and tell you how recovering your missing money or property is easier than ever. Stay with us. We find all kinds of items, and that becomes unclaimed property. 
and it mounts into millions of dollars. It could be stock, it could be CDs, but it could also be a diamond ring or a gold watch of your dad's. We returned over $50 million to the people of West Virginia. I'm proud of that. You can go on our website, you can look at the names and see if your name's on there or someone that you recognize. We set the standards in a nation in returning unclaimed property Welcome back to Treasury Notes, a show dedicated to sharing information about the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Long. About 13,000 names were recently included in the latest unclaimed property bulletin sent out in newspapers around the state. But now people who found their names in that list can claim that money through a much easier process. It's called e-claims and it's saving property owners time and confusion. Here's a closer look. If I had money out there and I didn't spend it, th there's something wrong there. But for Wilbur Thaxton, that's exactly what happened. One of my peers here uh, came and told me that my name was in the paper and that I had unclaimed property. Thaxton is one of thousands of people discovering lost money or possessions after State Treasurer John Perdue distributed an unclaimed property insert in newspapers around the state. I was surprised because I, uh, I can't imagine me having money somewhere that I've never used. Treasurer Purdue's program returned more than $100 to Thaxton in misplaced funds, and the system is even easier to use thanks to the new e-claim forms available online. They can just go in and get a password and get their claim form online and they don't have to get it notarized, they don't have to have it mailed or anything like that. Tammy Tubbs is one of the people working to process these claims. She says before e-claims, people had to fill out paperwork, get it notarized, and mail it in with a copy of their driver's license and social security card. But now technology makes it a much easier process for claims less than $1,000. Tubbs says she hopes people will embrace the new system. That's the way the, you know, technology is going. Everything is happening on the internet, everything. And for people like Wilbur Thaxton, it makes that surprise of finding unclaimed property even better. It's a fantastic program, like I say, very easy to use. Treasurer's staff was, was excellent in helping me, uh, providing feedback, letting me know when everything was coming, what to expect. Uh, like I say, it was, it was just a very good experience. Joining me now to talk a little bit more about the Unclaimed Property Program is Senior Claims Specialist Trisha Sullivan. Trisha, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we just saw a video of a man who had unclaimed property and didn't even know it, and so often that's the case. How is it that somebody could have unclaimed property and not realize they have it? Well, a lot of the unclaimed property, the reason it wasn't cashed, because it wasn't received. So what happens is a lot of times the address can be an incorrect address, or maybe it could have been they quit a job and it could have been a check that was left that they never went and claimed. So there's, there's a whole variety of reasons why you could have unclaimed property. Um, a lot of times people have money in bank accounts or maybe they switch jobs, and right. that could be the case as well. Yes, that's correct. Unclaimed property, when we talk about it, we usually talk about money. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it actually is property in the form of what? Any kind of financial asset. It could be a safe deposit box, um, CDs, stocks, uh, money order, cashier's check, anything like that that hasn't been claimed, turned in for its value. Um, what is the range of unclaimed property that's out there? For some people, it, it might not be a lot of money, but for some, it could be a significant amount. Yes, that's right. Some, it could be just a few dollars, anywhere from, you know, zero to, I've had a case where they've actually had over $500,000 and didn't know it. Is it hard to believe that someone can have that money and not realize it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the unclaimed properties that, where are all are they stored? Do, are they stored in different places? Such as the safe deposit boxes? Mm -hmm. They're stored in the treasurer's vault. And how does the treasurer get possession of this unclaimed property? It's a process, isn't it? It is a process. What happens is the holder of the unclaimed property, which is the company that has it, will turn the unclaimed property over per our Unclaimed Property Act to the state of West Virginia. and. Um, 
it just we receive it and we input it into our system and then at a later time we will advertise the names. So businesses also have to know the state rules and how to eventually turn that money over, that unclaimed property over to the state. Right, they do. What are some of the, of the programs that unclaimed property uses to make sure that business owners and other agencies are aware of the regulations? Okay, well what we do is the, um, the staff will go out and um, do a training session different holder seminars throughout the state of West Virginia and there are several coming up. When people hear that they have unclaimed property, what's the reaction? What is it? They, that's the first thing they want to know is where is it coming from, how did I get it, and who left it to me? Um, recently, the treasurer, as we said earlier, released a bulletin uh, with thousands of names of people who have unclaimed property in the state. How often does the treasurer's office release a bulletin like this? Usually we, re we release a bulletin two to three times a year, sometimes four, but we also have our website that we advertise the names are on, so you can go out and search it. And is this, is this a useful tool for people? Yes, it is. Do a lot of people look through it and, and say that they wouldn't have known they had unclaimed property if it wasn't if it wasn't for this piece of paper? Yes, that's correct. A lot of people do. A lot of times um, someone will contact them because they saw the name in there for them and then they'll contact our office. Do a lot of people think it's a scam when they hear unclaimed property? I know I've heard that before that people say, I uh, don't listen to that, it's a scam. Yes, I have heard that several times. They'll call in and they want to know if we're legit and of course we always tell them we're a state agency. So if people have questions about the legitimacy, I guess one of the first points maybe to let them know is that this is a free service, right? To get their unclaimed property back. Yes, that is right. It is a free service that we do. We'll search as many names that they would like. Um, they're able to call in and verify employees or anything like that that they receive the information from. Um, and if you think you have unclaimed property and it's not, your name is not listed in the bulletin, is there still a chance you have unclaimed property and what should you do? Yes, it is. We only publish so many, you know, 13,000 names in the advertisement and we hold so much property. So if you are curious to find out if your name we are holding, you just need to log on to our website at www.wvsdo.com and you can re do a free search on there. And often um, the property that the treasurer's office holds can, can go way back, it can date far back, so it might not be in the recent bulletin. That is correct. Our records go back to 1968. All right. Well, earlier we showed everyone how one man used e-claims to cash in on his unclaimed property. After the break, we'll have much more on this new technology. Stay with us. The primary function of the treasurer's office is cash management. People don't realize that we are the largest bank in the state of West Virginia. People have no idea how much money comes through the treasurer's office. Over $13 billion now. I pride myself in being the best state in managing money in the nation. I'm the banker of state government. We are your bank. We take care of your money. Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Long. I'm here with unclaimed property specialist Trisha Sullivan, who's here to talk to us today about unclaimed property and the process of retrieving your unclaimed property. She's also here to give us some tips. And the latest thing here in the Treasurer's Office is e-claims, which is a much easier way to find out if you have unclaimed property and to submit the forms for unclaimed property. Let's talk a little bit about e-claims. First of all, what are some of the differences between the old way of trying to submit a claim and now the new way? Okay, the old way, what would happen is if you saw your name, you would have to print off a form or use the form that's in the ad, and you would have to go get it notarized, fill it out, send a copy of your driver's license and copy of your social security card. Now, what you do is you go online to our website, you create an account on our eClaim site, and then once you create your account, it asks your basic information such as name, your address, your driver's license number, your social security number, 
and you input that information in and create a username and password. Once you do that, then you log back in, you go to property search to claim the property. How do you think it makes it easier for people to submit for unclaimed property now that we have the e-claim system? Well, what it does is you don't no longer have to go and get anything notarized. So, you know, no matter what time of day, you can log on to the account at your convenience and create it. And for a lot of others, I mean, West Virginia really does lead the nation in unclaimed property. I think the state has always had a great unclaimed property system for people to access, but I know with e-claims, it's stepped it up even a notch more because I've been to other 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 states and other websites and usually they still have the process where you have to get something notarized you have to make lots of copies of different um, identification and, and mail that in but this really eliminates that for most people yes for most people it does and what it does is you know we take that information that's provided such as the social security number and the DMV the driver's license number and we run that and verify that it's the person if we get a hit mat if we get a match that hits back that is them then basically we process the claim. Now, is there a limit? I think uh, we said that there is a limit for people to submit e-claims if it's over maybe a thousand dollars or so? Yes, anyone can submit a claim, but if it's over a thousand dollars, what we will do is come back to the, the claimant and request additional information through email. The man I spoke to earlier who said he submitted through eClaims, he said it was a great process, a very neat experience for him. He also said that um, a person from the treasurer's office actually contacted him to let him know um, how the system was going to work. How is it that the representatives at the treasurer's office are able to work with people so closely to get their money back? Well, it's really easy. Um, as far as, you know, a lot of times we'll call, they'll call in and get questions. Well, it's easy just to walk them through it, help them file it while we're over the phone. Does the treasurer's office pride itself on having that great customer service? I would think yes. so. Um, talk a little bit more about the customer service. Uh, if people have any questions at all, all it is is a phone number away, right? Yes, that is correct. It's an 800 number. They call in and we have several different technicians that will take the phone calls and answer the questions. All right. Um, anything else you can add about the unclaimed property system to tell people that, to I guess encourage people to go out there and make sure that they're not, you know, they don't have missing money out there. Right. It is really normal people that have unclaimed property or people who don't know about it. Such as, an example is, if you have a savings account, a lot of times they'll put the account in and to collect the money and trying to collect the interest. Well, what happens is, if you don't make a $1 deposit every five years, it becomes dormant and has turned over to the state treasurer's office. Do you have any neat stories of people who've, who've gone through the ranks and said, I've gone years and years and didn't realize I had unclaimed property and now I have a little more money in my pocket. Yes, there, I think several of them have. A lot of people, you know, it's five to seven years normally before the unclaimed property is turned over to us. So sometimes you have people who have had insurance policies and the policy matured and that policy was from 40 years ago. And talk a little bit about, we touched on this before, but talk about how um, West Virginia in particular is really leading the nation when it comes to returning that money. I think uh, there was even a national uh, news organization that covered the state about how efficient unclaimed property is here. Right. I think um, we, are, we do lead the nation in it, and a lot of it's because of the technology we have. We have, you know, we have a new computer database that we got back in 2005 for unclaimed property and it just has really worked well. Why is technology so important to emphasize in this process? Technology is so important because it helps us keep up to date. With the technology changing, it makes it easier for not only the staff but also for the users. Are you happy to see when someone gets that check in the mail and, and you know that you've helped someone recover something that you know, can really help. I mean, we, I've talked to several people who say it might have only been $100, $200, $300, but that pays a lot of bills in this day and age. And in this day and age, everybody's trying to save and, and save where they can and make the most out of their money. Yes, it does. I know there have a lot of been times we've received phone calls and they really needed the money and how important it was to them that they received it to pay bills. 
And this is one of, really one of the primary functions of the state treasurer's office. I think for years um, this program has just evolved and developed. And again, as you said, the technology has, is really the focal point right now to making this a success. Any more thoughts on how um, the technology will continue to improve and make the system easier? I think um, one of the ways, you know, we have several goals that we have in mind for the eClaim system. We, you know, have a basic idea of how we're using it now. Um, we would like to go into more. Right now, you have to be an individual. You have to live in West Virginia. We have other ideas on how to expand it to where we can get more stuff electronically. Um, I know we're going to imaging. It makes it much easier. Yes, it does. Now, if you live, most of our viewers out there live in West Virginia, but if you've lived in other states or if you're a West Virginian who lives in another state now, you should always probably cross-examine those states for unclaimed property that you've lived in. Yes, that is right. Any state that you've lived in, it's a possibility that you could have unclaimed property. So. What's the easiest way to, to check around and make sure you're not missing out? There are several websites you can go to. Each state has their own website, or you can go to um, www.missingmoney.com. Okay, but if you go to our website, the wvtreasury.com, it's a very simple process to just go on there and check for your name. Do you also need to check for your address and fill out some other information? If you are doing just a basic search, you can go to our website and property search and you can search your name and any name and any family relative's name. Okay. Um, and just to kind of recap this, the whole unclaimed property system, do you think it's, it's a good thing that people are able to have access to this money? Because I know in the past, people weren't able to do this that easily. I think it's really good to have access to it because it gives people need the money now. The times have changed. And so by making it easier, I, we have a lot of response. And again, uh, just your personal reaction when you see someone getting that, getting that money back, getting it's, that property back. It is really nice to be able to have customer service and to be able to provide a service to, to someone. And I know, uh, you know, if people call, they always say the staff is so friendly and so helpful. I think that's a real feather in the cap as well. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Tricia Sullivan, for joining us today. We appreciate you being here. Again, if you have any questions about unclaimed property, definitely visit our website. It's www.wvtreasury.com. When we return, we'll have much more on the events here at the Treasurer's Office. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I look at Smart 529 as one of the cornerstones of the treasurer's office. It gives parents and grandparents an opportunity to save for that college education. We work day and night trying to make people aware how important it is for them to save at a very young age for that college education for their children and grandchildren. Education is the future for West Virginia. I believe that's the future for our children and that's why I've made it one of the cornerstones in the treasurer's office. Welcome back to Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Long. I'm joined today by Tricia Sullivan, who works with our Unclaimed Property Division. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tricia. Uh, let's talk a little bit about unclaimed property and what all that encompasses. I know that a lot of people, when we talk about unclaimed property, obviously they think money first because that's what most people get back. They get unclaimed property back in the form of cash, but that's not always the case. And tell me why that is. Okay, well sometimes what we receive safe deposit boxes. And so what happens is um, the owner of the box did not pay their fee, their monthly fee, and the, it's turned over to our office. And so we receive the contents. What are some of the contents that you've seen in these, um, in these safe deposit boxes? Well, there's different types. Sometimes it's paper. Um, but mostly it's coins, currency, rings, watches, stamp collection. Some things that can be really valuable. I know that we have an inventory of, of a lot of jewelry, I'm sure. And as you said, uh, a lot of watches. What are some of the other things that are probably the most valuable? Um, 
usually the jewelry is probably the most valuable, the currency, the coins, because there are coin collections. And we were talking earlier about our e-claims program. Um, the items that are out there in unclaimed property, are those, those people also to claim those on the internet or do they have to make a special phone call? They can do either. Um, they can start the claim out on e-claims if they would like to. And then what we do is we research it to check the value of it. If there's fees that they are due the bank, and we just will email them back or send them a letter and let them know what they need to do to claim it. Do a lot of hours go into categorizing all this material and cataloging it? Yes, it, we, it does. It takes very time consuming to do the inventory and to catalog it. And of course, the treasurer's office actually has a warehouse and you said a lot of it is stored in the warehouse or in the um, safe that the treasurer's office has. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that is correct. Any other places that this unclaimed property is stored here in the state? Not as, no, as far as I know of, everything stays in the vault. Okay, so most of that stuff is secured very safely and tightly. Yes, that is correct. Um, Again, talking a little bit about e-claims, this program has been really successful. It's kind of taken off, uh, and it's probably because it's just so easy to use. I've tried it. You go online. It's, it's so simple. All you have to do is fill out a few things, your name, address, and, and just a few fields. Um, in the first month, how, much, how many claims, because we just started this not too long ago, do you know how many claims you've had in the first month? In this recent advertisement that we did, we've had over 1,800 claims filed electronically. And that could be thousands and thousands of dollars, is that right? That is correct. How many, cl how many people were in this bulletin? There were 13,000 roughly names that was listed. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are still more people out there who could have unclaimed property, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. Thank you so much, Tricia, for joining us today. Again, we're here talking about unclaimed property. And if you have any questions about unclaimed property, go to our website, www.wvtreasury.com. As we told you earlier, financial education continues to be a focal point of the treasurer's office this year. In 2010, Treasurer Purdue will host a series of money conferences and financial education events. Three of the widely popular women and money conferences will be held this year in Clarksburg, Lewisburg, and Beckley. Now the treasurer will host a three-day high school money conference event in the Eastern Panhandle. That training is designed to be one of the components of the treasurer's net worth program, which integrates financial education into every grade at every school around the state. And again, we want you to continue to check our website, www.wvtreasury.com, for more information on the dates, times, locations, and registration information for the 2010 Money Conferences and Financial Education events. That's our time for now. Remember, you can always get the latest on news information and events from the State Treasurer's Office online. I want to thank Tricia Sullivan with Unclaimed Property for joining us here today. And thanks to the many staff members who helped make this show possible. Also, a big thank you to the West Virginia Library Commission for technical direction. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Long with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. Thanks for joining us.